let's do it <laughs> so jitesh awesome. uh, thanks for thanks for uh, joining in i think uh, it's just you and me maybe the time zone uh, could have uh, uh, caused some issues for some of the other international panelists um however great to meet you as the ceo of um, infinity chains and um, you know you've been a serial uh, techpreneur um and 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 uh you know built and sold various businesses uh, great to meet you i thought uh, today we'll discuss um a few uh, important uh, aspects of uh, tech tech um as as uh, the name of our group and some of these aspects are uh the boom in semiconductors uh across the world particularly the production in asia the impetus on make in india and uh, prime minister modi's impetus on make in india and how the factors in the socio economic geopolitical factors in asia can influence and help india become a, a leading semiconductor and uh, uh, you know chip manufacturer in the future as uh, generally i would think that uh, india is a trusted name globally uh, in spite of whatever uh, ups and downs but india is overall a trusted name indians and india is overall a trusted uh, community and a name across the world the extensive use of now uh, the third uh, point i thought we can uh, discuss is the extensive use of um iot uh, devices uh, which are now um uh, which are now happening uh, which is now part of you know life everywhere for example your coffee cup as you mentioned uh, could also have uh a chip embedded in it which would tell you the temperature the quality uh, uh you know how the the water quality may have affected the coffee bean and its flavors i mean it's just endless the the granularity that uh, uh iot uh, would offer and uh, the fourth uh, uh subject uh, you know fourth part, part of our thesis the future of uh, iot and its uh, relation with the uh, uh, you know the uh, the chips and chip manufacturing and integration with the internet and how it will affect us uh, any awesome. any other any other point uh, any other uh, thing yeah. that you'd like to add uh, that's that's a very good uh, list uh, sunil first of all i would say uh, you know thank you for having me thank you harassis uh, for having me thank you frank uh, super excited uh it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, great platform i've been to horasis a few times it's an amazing pra- uh, platform brings a diverse set of people with diverse ideas right uh i'll give a quick introduction of who i am uh, my name is jitesh shetty uh, as sunil said i'm a, a serial tech uh, founder uh, so i've started a few uh, tech companies which are kind of deep uh, tech companies uh some of them didn't do that well but raised a uh, venture capital uh, grew the companies uh the last one that i started is called uh, quick labs which is in the education tech space and we sold that company to google in 2016 and it's at the heart of uh, google clouds commercial and go to market strategy right uh, so i think it's a, it's an amazing uh, topic uh one of the things uh, that i would say everything that sunil added right i think one thing that is happening is that in the last 5 years we are seeing an absolute explosion of smart devices right if you think about 10 years back we thought uh, a semiconductor chip goes into a computer about 15 years back right about 8 10 years back we started to internalize the idea that it, it can actually also go into a smartphone right fast forward in the last 5 years it's become so omnipresent that in your thermostat to your toothbrush to everywhere there is a semiconductor chip right it's fascinating right everything is smart everything is connected so there is this exponential demand that has happened due to this due to these 
uh, the smart devices interconnected uh, 5g that's coming up which is going to again explode that demand uh, but how do you uh, really kind of satisfy this with supply right uh, that's been a problem and you can clearly see it you, you see a lot in the automobile industry they are making a massive uh, uh, they're really shouting out loud right they're saying oh you know we are not getting the semiconductor chips it's slowing down our entire production uh, you hear these stories here in the us that uh, if you're going to hawaii there are no kind of uh, cars to rent and uh, when you really double click zoom in it turns out that one of the things that's slowing down the production is the semiconductor uh, uh, chips right lack of that lack of that the supply chain that's gotten impacted uh, i think covid really uh, 10xed this problem right covid 10x the supply chain problem mm-hmm. uh, and i think the supply chains are getting rewired and uh, india is at a very very good position to take advantage of this right to leverage this uh india obviously as sunil rightly said has a history of uh, uh good talent uh, uh on the software services side now we are seeing it on the product side just before we went live we are talking about a very good ipo that happened in india uh, and you know uh, you're seeing this a lot of productization happen on the software side there is no reason why uh, uh the same cannot happen on the hardware side right we are seeing with smartphones but with other devices other smart devices and then you kind of uh, drill down and say let's build the supply chain side of it let's build a home grown uh, semiconductor chip industry uh, all the way right and uh, uh, one of the things what the modi government has done is really taken an extremely bold step and said that if you set a semiconductor manufacturing unit in india from scratch uh, we will give you a billion dollars in incentives right a big chunk of that is in direct cash but others are kind of incentives to build so it's an exciting time for india uh, to to really uh, kind of build something out here uh, from scratch which will have kind of dividends for years to come so <clears throat> thank you for that uh, jitesh uh, so when you say that uh, the prime minister uh, announced a billion dollars in incentives uh, for semiconductor manufacturers you're talking about a completely greenfield project right and so so th- those incentives also entail uh, grants from the government so what what would that what would that incentive package uh, uh, have exactly yeah that's a that's a great question sunil right so i have not really gone down into the details of what that is what i do know at a 40000 feet level it bundles uh, both credit that uh, the manufacturer will get in terms of debt uh, you know uh, or equity credit uh, and it, there are incentives right you know uh, real estate uh, land other infrastructure all of that will be expedited and you get credits in that right uh, and it's part of the whole made in india initiative that the government has been pushing now for years uh but the semiconductor aspect of it is is very recent and that is super exciting so how how important uh you know w- w- what do you see is are the inherent values of setting up a manufacturing uh a semiconductor uh you know chip manufacturing facility um in india uh you know considering that considering the cost i think uh, you know china would probably be far more cost effective and uh, do you think that uh, it would bridge the supply the, the supply demand gap that's happening like you mentioned the auto industry and other uh, because it seems that all all brick and mortar industries are also moving into the integration iot integration of you know with all devices all technologies uh, uh, led of course by tesla yeah yeah that's a good question sunil right so i think broadly there are three things one thing is if you think about a uh, semiconductor industry and the semiconductor development right the design piece not many people realize but it's largely software right so the design of the chip is is a software play it's a software problem and uh, the talent pool for that is all software you look at companies like nvidia here qualcomm here you look at uh, companies like altera they are actually hiring software engineers to go and design this right 
Now, the second piece is fabrication, where you think of like really deep manufacturing. The supply chain for fabrication has largely moved to Asia. And one of the effects that has happened due to that is that what you need to build, the machines that you need, all of that largely get manufactured today in Asia, right? Uh, a lot of the talent on the commercial side is available in Asia and uh, a lot of data shows it's largely rooted in Singapore and in that APAC region, right? So it's very proximity is there to India. If you really zoom in, double click, I think even that commercial talent largely, there is uh, probably a good chunk of Indian community there, right? So those two pieces, right? The talent on the on the design side and the talent on the commercial side uh, is available. The third piece, I would say, I think what is interesting about India for an industry like the semiconductor chip industry is that there is a lot of IP that goes in when American or European companies are coming up with a new chip and they're thinking we'll fabricate this in China, Taiwan or India. There is a lot of this inherent risk of this IP getting stolen, right? This IP getting, you know, uh, 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 getting compromised. I think the good thing about India is it's a democracy. You know, uh, uh, you can you can say it's uh, it, 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 it's slow. Uh, you can say anything, but it is a functional democracy. And I think that puts it in a lot better spot uh, for that industry to move there uh, for uh, anyone who is investing in the R&D of these chip designs to fabricate it there. Right. Uh, you have that peace of mind uh, that I can really uh, go to court if my IP is compromised or stolen. Thank you for that, uh, Jitesh. And uh, I think you've touched upon a very important subject, uh, which is uh, data security and trusted sources. So what is, uh, you know, there is this, there's, there's always this tussle on, uh, uh, you know, cyber intelligence and cyber security and uh, even in India now, uh, you know, a, a lot of the CCTV manufactured in China, you know, there are there are barriers to entry in India uh, sent by the government because of this trusted source question, because ultimately the chip, the whole hardware is manufactured in China. The back end uh, software is also uh, Chinese. So yeah. uh, so. So you 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 broached upon two two parts the software and the physical hardware uh, of the manufacturing. So do you see this as playing an important role for particularly uh, Indian companies as well as the rest of the world that we can trust an Indian source of manufacturing? And even if the software says uh, even if the software design element uh, comes from uh, um, you know uh, an Intel or a Nvidia. Uh, but the the trusted source of the hardware manufacturing, Indian, you know, the Indian manufacturing process and the Indian manufacturer uh, can be uh, trusted more than, say, anywhere else in the region. Yeah, I, I think so, Sunil, right? I mean, uh, take the textbook example of Huawei, what's happening with Huawei, right? It's it's a, it's a, it's it's become a poster child. Uh, and uh, you think about it, right? It's pretty fascinating that the Congress here is thinking of passing a bill specifically for this one Chinese company, right? And the school of thought, largely, right, if you cut through the noise, what is the school of thought? The thought is that this company, we it is very hard for us to establish what does the ownership of this company look like? Who's controlling this company? Now, if I ask you for any Indian company, is that hard to figure out? The answer is no, right? It's easy to no, figure no. out. I think ultimately, no. yeah, yeah, particularly now, right? It's, it's, I think you can say that there is slowness, there are inefficiencies, but these things of uh, governance, transparency, uh, the ownership structure, all of that is very clear. And ultimately, that plays a very big role, uh, whether a state is involved or a private entity is involved, right? That's one. Second, you know, Either with software or with hardware, the vendor can just give you so much insight and transparency into how the system is working. Ultimately, everyone relies on audit workflows and the the law of the land, right? The framework that the land is giving them to hold someone accountable, right? Ultimately, anywhere you think of anything, right? Big companies like Google, 
Yahoo, what they are doing is they are getting audited. What is GDPR, right? GDPR is you're getting audited to make sure that you're not exploiting user data, right? Google, obviously massive company goes out of the way to show that we are not abusing anyone's user data, right? So audit is going to happen. And that again, when it comes down to that, uh, you want to be in a country which is uh, uh, democratic, where there is uh, the law of the land, there are checks and balances, you can go to court. Uh, there is there is a legal structure to go and uh, figure out, uh, get insights into how a company is working, right? There are at least those instruments in place. So I do think when you look at uh, that region, India is uh, is definitely extremely well positioned with these criteria when you think of that. I think, uh, you know, your thesis on this is absolutely right. And the world seems to be more and more moving in that direction, particularly uh, all the chatter that is now coming out, uh, whether it's Huawei uh, or it's uh, uh, some of the CCTV uh, companies. Uh, Huawei, of course, is in telecommunication, but even the security industry, security technology, the CCTV uh, industry that... Uh, you know, so if you could just uh, elaborate a bit, uh, uh, you know, for us all, uh, Jitesh, uh, Jitesh, on uh, uh, let's say camera is placed uh, somewhere in a sensitive location, let's say an oil refinery in India or a, you know, mega financial commercial institution uh, and the chip, the semiconductor is Chinese and uh, or the software is Chinese. I'm not saying that anything is going wrong, but just Hypothetically speaking, uh, what could be the breach, uh, uh, you know, from there, how can, uh, you know, being a being a, a technology man yourself, what would be what would be the potential breaches uh, uh, coming from there, uh, uh, you know, be it the software or the chip itself, if you could just, uh, you know, elaborate on that for a few minutes. Yeah, I think the classic case, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, thinks about is that, you know, you can take some sensitive data, whether it's your user PII or some commercially sensitive data, uh, take that data outside and then abuse it, right? Just take it outside of the designated uh, 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 framework it should be in, take it outside of the uh, dot, uh, the lines that are put, right? That uh, you have to be within this box, take it outside of the box and then abuse it. That's the classic case. Now, how can that happen? Right. Uh, you know, what Correct. are kind of some of the classic abuse vectors, right? One is within software. Uh, you know, you're collecting user data, you're collecting someone's address, phone number, email. Uh, then you are using that data uh, as a service provider to upsell something. And you have not really taken care of that data. Well, that data got leaked and now it's out on the Internet, right? Uh, uh, GDPR, for example, what it's trying to do, one of its policies is the wipeout policy. What is the wipeout policy? Right? I created an account at uh, XYZ.com to buy some stuff. It's an e-commerce site. I decided, OK, I don't like the site. I deleted my account. It should get completely deleted within 30 days. All my pri uh, private information uh, where I can be identified uh, personally, that should get deleted, right? So at a software level, right, uh, you know, that that is one abuse vector where your uh, PII or uh, any data that is commercially, it's a trade secret, it's commercial uh, interest is there, that gets abused, that gets taken out, shared with people, shouldn't be shared, gets abused. At a hardware level, Huawei is the classic case, right? Uh, you know, extraordinary company, uh, you know, growing up in Asia, small town, I feel proud, right? Even though it's a Chinese company, what they have done, how fast they have been able to move, uh, you know, how fast they were able to get beyond Ericsson and uh, uh, Cisco here, right? But the fear is, uh, you know, if this is powering 5G and 5G is being used to manage critical workloads, your kind of Government communication is happening on 5G. Your airplanes are moving. That's happening on 5G. At a hardware level, can you intercept that data, move that data outside the country, and you're keeping a copy of that data, right? You know, you're just kind of, uh, there's, there's another channel the data is moving on. So it can happen both at a hardware level or, or a software level. Uh, and vendors always, anyone, they provide proofs, evidence. They are transparent about, like, you know, this is how, 
our system works uh, especially if you're built on what's called an open source project a lot of vendors say you know this is how our code works you can go read the code you can put your experts out there you know we don't abuse your data at all right that's how we use in production we don't make any changes they do that but i think that the the, the kind of the the very canonical instrument everyone has is audit right uh, governments uh, uh, provide uh, this instrument companies uh, you know they sign up they say yeah we are open to getting audited once a year once in two quarters and then you have uh, you're getting audited in a certain uh, jurisdiction there is the law of the land uh, that ultimately protects you right ultimately it's uh, the the software system or the hardware system uh, can have loopholes by design but it's the law of the land that's protecting you so uh, essentially uh, i think essentially what you're saying and, and i agree with you completely that both on the software side and uh, the huawei case of um, you know the hardware transmitting uh, or or keeping a backup and then you know later on being transmitted in other ways uh, the, the the you know the critical data and like uh, you know mukesh amani said that data is the new oil and i think yeah. a lot of these uh, countries realize that you know very early on and, uh, and 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 i mean for example you mentioned about an ipo i mean uh, zomato is uh, i think burning losing 3000 crores a year but it's valued at 90000 crores which is uh, <laughs> 13 billion dollars or or 12 billion dollars in today's rate yeah uh, and then you got companies who are been existing for 50 years and turning around a billion dollars a quarter profit <laughs> and they have a lower valuation so i think it all comes down to data that they have the they you know they have the usage trends of uh, 200 300 million people which uh, gives you, you you know from that data the kind of uh, future predictions that can come and the value is in the eyeballs and that data essentially you know yeah yeah i think i think the classic case i would say is uh, uh, e-commerce right? is retail right uh, see what happens in retail if you think about uh, amazon versus safeway here uh, is that every time you go to safeway uh, it knows almost nothing about you to engage you to make you sticky to make you keep coming back to view the best best, best experience uh, but in a, when you move uh, the human being to a digital world like Amazon, uh, it just knows way too much about you, right? To completely optimize the experience uh, for you and uh, ultimately, you know, better engage you, uh, better stickiness, uh, more transactions and all that. So as you rightly said, Sunil, right, it's a, uh, the, the, uh, the data is becoming almost equivalent to what land was in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Right. It is becoming that, you know, it is the primary unit. Uh, without that, uh, you uh, just won't be able to produce. It's a primary unit of production uh, and it's definitely getting there right across the board. You think of any any businesses uh, without uh, data, uh, without uh, a better way of using data, even enterprises, what's happening in BI, that whole explosion is built around that. Right. So. Um... Thanks for that uh, uh, input, uh, Jitesh. I'm just going to move now to the next uh, 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 subject, and 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 you and I both agree, and I think by and large the world that you know protection of your, uh, you know your sources and protection of your data and information, uh, be it a country or be it an individual, is paramount uh, in the in the world today. So. Now coming to uh, the you know Internet of Things, Internet of Things, application of Internet of Things, and where all you know would you see the application of Internet of Things happening? And then we come back down to the chip, to the semiconductor uh, chip, uh, you know the role that that would play. Uh, so I, you know we we'll break it up into uh, three parts: the Internet IoT penetration of IoT and the a potential day-to-day -day devices, both for the consumer and for businesses, and the role that you know the uh, local manufacturing, uh, if not uh, the design architecture of the chip, will play in um, yeah. in that part. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's a, it's a, it's a great segue, right, Sunil? So I think uh, we can 
slice this uh, from uh, two angles. Uh, let's take the consumer angle first and then the enterprise angle, right? In the consumer angle, I think what is happening is uh, your everyday things that you were doing manually and you had to manually monitor something that is moving to IoT. A very simple example is thermostat, your refrigerator, right? Thermostat, we use uh, Google's Nest at home. Uh, and a classic use case, you would have to monitor the temperature, adjust your HVAC, your AC and heater, and then, uh, you know, keep changing it. Right now, uh, the smart uh, device is doing it. It's it's very smartly optimizing it both for your experience at home and for uh, the economics. Right. Making sure you don't consume a lot. The same is happening uh, with other things for consumers. The car, for example, what Tesla has done is insane. Right taken it to a whole new level that's happening in the automobile industry. Uh, but other things that that, you know, where uh, you would have to do it manually, especially the measurement and the monitoring piece, right? Something that a human would have to monitor. You would have to give your mental cycles to monitor. That's getting automated, right? And uh, I think very big uh, retailers uh, will be the first ones to take massive advantage of this. For example, Amazon again, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, smarter ways to figure out that you need a refill. You know, your detergent is done. Uh, the, uh, the washer dryer is connected. Uh, you know that the detergent is done. Can can you, you know, take uh, the one click order of Amazon to a whole new level? All right. And you can say, oh, you know, we can already see this is draining out. You need a refill. We've ordered. It's connected to your Amazon account. That's one that's happening on the B2C side. On the B2B side, I think what's happening is software is actually lagging a bit when you think of traditional companies, uh, traditional industries like manufacturing oil and gas. So their IoT is really, really becoming the first citizen to open the door, right? Uh, classic case is manufacturing supply chain. We work with a company in India called Wellspun. Uh, what they do is uh, they do a variety of businesses, but one business they are in is home textile mm -hmm. and uh, they're really up there when it comes to adopting technology. Uh, they fully automate their supply chain. Uh, so when a bale of cotton enters their factory in Anjar uh, through IoT that's picked up that this bale of cotton came in, uh, it is read that this is Egyptian cotton automatically and it came in from Egypt. That gets put put into their SAP instance, which now has a new batch that oh, this cotton has come in. It came in from Egypt. This is when it came in and it's ready for production, right? It knows that uh, at this point, this will be ready for production in the factory. So there you see it's a big, massive IoT play. More and more will happen as uh, you, you know, we see 5G, the networks become faster. Uh, more and more of that will happen, right? Uh, I mean, uh, weather, uh, a classic thing, what's happening with agri-tech in India, right? It's getting disrupted in a very, very big way uh, where you're giving farmers all these signals directly on their phone and then giving them some smart sensors to measure the health of the soil, uh, uh, to measure how the crop is doing, uh, all completely connected to a very ordinary uh, device that we think about today, right? The phone. So both of those, right, Sunil, you, when you slice it out from that way, I think on the B2C side, a lot will happen. Devices are getting cheaper and then uh, will help you automate some of these things, especially when you're measuring or monitoring something. And on the B2B side, uh, largely manufacturing, I feel, right, where production is manual, hard to scale, you know, that getting kind of uh, automated. Uh, no, I, I completely agree with you. And, you know, you spoke about uh, the uh, agri-tech business, which is just uh, still finding its feet, but the interest is tremendous. And uh, you will be surprised uh, the kind of knowledge because, you see, you had the older generation of farmers, but then you have their children and their grandkids yeah. who've all grown up at par with any other uh, kid anywhere in the world because of, yeah. you know, the smartphone. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And I think India's broadband uh, and internet penetration uh, is probably in the last, uh, in the last, uh, you know, two decades, um, is is probably the fastest, you know, in in the world. Uh, yeah. Even in even in rural even in rural India, you know, everyone is on Facebook. Everyone is on 
Google, everyone is on, you know, now kids are on Instagram uh, in villages and, you know, so it's, uh, so the, they are educating the value of technology to their, to the older generation who might be technology agnostic in their yeah. overview. You know, for example, yeah. my father still uses uh, the old Nokia phone. And then when this whole uh, Pegasus uh, scandal broke out, he said, see, they can't touch <laughs> this phone. This is analog. You, you, you are at risk because you are on this uh, digital phone, which is monitoring your every movement. You know? <laughs> so, Interesting. Um, I mean, that's that's on a lighter side. But this is where, you know, the, the, the younger generation are educating the older generation of farmers. Uh, yeah. Because we do some work in the farm sector. And I've seen uh, that they're telling them, you know, the, like you said, soil, soil quality. And now drones are being used. Uh, across so that you don't need to uh, you know the drone will tell you the how uh, the crop is coming up or if there is any uh, you know fungicides needed or if there's any so the drone tells you the quality just just through visual uh, parameters you know it gives you 80 to 90 percent uh, so so there are many industries in India which are being disrupted the transportation industry uh, you know, if you see uh, the old trucking industry is going through a massive change, yeah. uh, which is, you know, they're using IoT for driver fatigue, for uh, fuel, for, uh, uh, you know, the machine uh, functioning of the machine, the machine parameters, the engine parameters, the idling parameters, uh, the geolocations, the geotagging, geofencing. So technology and, uh, you know, the, the semiconductors are basically going even in a truck, which was uh, the same, the same truck technology, uh, which was there 30 years back, but it's being transformed. Yeah. So sitting in a sitting in a response center because of that chip, you can come to see that, OK, look, uh, the driver has been driving for six hours nonstop and, uh, you know, he's there's a bit of bring happening and he's not stable on the accelerator. So all these things, uh, it's just an endless amount of data which is coming, uh, uh, you know, and, and helping improve things. So I, I completely agree uh, on the future of IoT, particularly in a country like India, uh, yeah. you know, which which is, uh, uh, you know, which is all industries and areas are open for, uh, you know, technological integration. So... Uh, now, you know, I come to the point, do you do you believe that uh, India can manufacture semiconductors of the A scale, B, uh, the hardware, quality of the hardware and, you know, sustainable sustainability of the uh, chip and C, will India have the capability in future to be able to design uh, uh, you know, uh, like you said, the likes of, um, you know, uh, NVIDIA or uh, Intel, would India have that capability amongst us? Because all the brilliant brains like yourself fly off to the U.S., <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, so so do you, do you, you know, what do you think about these three aspects uh, of this uh, space? Yeah, I, yeah, that's a great, uh, great question, right, Sunil? So let's, uh, uh, I think, Let's talk about the manufacturing first. I think uh, in some sense, that is a low hanging fruit. Uh, I do think if the government uh, provides uh, the right uh, the right framework, uh, which enables uh, a setting up something quickly, second, uh, getting the right infrastructure to operate and third, enabling the supply chain to be very efficient, right? those three things, uh, then manufacturing uh, can be done uh, at scale in India, right? Uh, the talent pool is available to fabricate, right? For fabrication. For design, it's a little difficult. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, that it's the talent problem, Sunil. I think, I think India has amazing talent. One of the challenges now, not many people realize, but the most difficult thing in India to do is hire software engineers. <laughs> It's super hard. Like there's a huge demand. There's a lot of talent. Uh, I don't think it's a talent problem. I think it's a capex problem. Uh, 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 designing uh, uh, semiconductor chips is a massive, massive. Uh, 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 you need really deep pockets. You need a lot of fuel in the tank. 
uh, and i think that is also very very long term play uh, and the uh, pipeline that some of these companies have apple for example right it's a very long pipeline and i think uh, i think that will take a bit right you need uh, i think you need a situation like what happened in china where uh, software uh, is easy to build it's a low capex play uh because of cloud the infrastructure required for software has become opex right so i don't need to worry about having those resources if i can scale my business the beauty of software is it's a high margin play uh so then if you can then build that cash cow what uh, companies like alibaba did then you can invest that into more kind of long term plays like you know designing your own chip right so that i think you know uh, you you need just just companies with a lot of cash on the balance sheet right sitting on just uh, tons of tons of cash i also want to just repeat one thing uh, uh, sunil if it's okay right so when i was giving the example of huawei just to be very sure i was not saying that they are stealing data or anything right that's not what <laughs> i was saying sunil and i were just using them as an example just just hmm. for everyone here and the recording right we were just using them as an example right Correct. that you know anyway that's uh, all in the public forum uh, that's all, all in the public, public forum debate. yeah yeah we're just quoting public debate we're just we're just so quoting public there, debate nothing, yeah uh, yeah we're, we're not saying anything against any company or company yeah, yeah. Uh, just a conversation on so tell me uh, uh, do you believe uh, 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 you know that uh, that one day we will have semiconductors in our i mean you would know better but in our in our toothbrush uh, on our you know on our pillows uh, on our beds uh, and 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 where 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 does this end uh, you know our panel is to talk about the growth of the semiconductor industry and the technology yeah, application yeah. uh but now that we're coming to the end of our chat where 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 do you believe where does it end where does the internet of things application and on particularly on a on a personal scale i'm not talking about on on the enterprise side because on enterprise yeah, side yeah. it's it's unending yeah 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 <laughs> efficiencies efficiencies are unending on the enterprise side but what about yeah. on the personal application you know you got smart toothbrushes smart sunglasses uh smart combs uh i mean where does it smart clothes smart wear you know where yeah, where, yeah. where does it end where is the i mean is it is it all do you believe it's all headed towards singularity where uh, there'll be human embedded uh, chips in the near future and say you're in my uh, lifetime in the next uh, 10 years or 15 or 20 years what do you think about uh, and then we'll uh, conclude the discussion uh, post your thesis yeah, on yeah, this uh, yeah, yeah. Yes yeah, so I think a couple of thoughts there right I think on the consumer side two there are two broad trends one is uh, this uh, uh I I think I think humans are getting used to getting information very quickly especially through search engines right uh, that uh, behavioral pattern is going to different modalities when you ask something to Alexa you ask something to Siri uh you know uh, and that is that has changed behavior now right for good there is no way to move back now right our kids for example like that that's the new kind of uh, uh, the, the new world for them they are going to start there right that anything that has been established you don't have to memorize it it's available at your fingertips right then Correct. what happens there is that uh, more and more devices uh, are going to be plugged in uh in uh, different form factors uh, in different situations uh you know uh like you're running you have your watch which is smart so that will happen more and more the second thing that will happen is anything that requires monitoring right and sensing data from somewhere monitoring it then making that data available to you in a beautified way and over a period of time figuring out trends uh, the classic use case is health i strongly strongly believe uh, that apple will own the medical uh, record uh, industry in the next 3 4 years right uh, because uh, they have productized everything so well uh, that uh, and the and the layer they are building around like uh, health for example right within uh, both the watch and just within osx 
within the, within their os uh, is uh, is an example right you know you can sense all of that important vital data very quickly and then beautify it give you trends over a period of time right there's no more to tell someone who you know uh, check your uh, heart rate keep checking your bp keep checking your this right that adherence is very hard humans are not very disciplined so that piece i think more and more we, we can, will see, we can right? see that we can see that with the few dropouts that we had today itself <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no. so both Sorry, those areas continue. i would say sunil right one area where anywhere on the consumer side where monitoring has to happen continuous health is an example but others too cameras for example right uh, you need to check movement you need to check anything like that over a period of time uh you know google photos is one of my uh, absolutely favorite product right you should if you have not used google photos you should use it. it works like magic i would say you know this after google search is uh, one of the greatest software product built out there and a classic example right humans are clicking more pictures hard to manage uh, by yourself the, the ai manages it for you so more and more like that right problems that are harder to manage problems that are uh, you know uh uh that uh, where you need to do some kind of a monitoring uh those kind of problems uh, will uh slowly slowly start moving uh you know uh where we'll see more and more iot play okay jitesh you you um uh you know you you skirted my question on are we headed towards singularity <laughs> That's uh, a that yeah that's a little far fetched uh, Sunil I, I it will happen I, I don't know I, when right <laughs> I personally believe that we are headed towards singularity because we are obsessed I mean let me tell you uh you take away food from a from a teenager and he won't care or she won't care but you take their phone away and it's because you know uh it, it's uh they'll bring the whole building down forget about the house if their phone is away from them for even 5 minutes let alone 5 hours or 5 days and yeah. uh, this kind of uh, like you said you know the right word is stickiness uh you know this kind of stickiness uh, i think is going to lead to um a, a, you know a massive boom in the semiconductor industry the semiconductor chips which will uh, uh, and 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 Uh, certainly your thoughts that you know the government is offering a billion dollars in uh, incentives and uh, swaps to greenfield semiconductor projects is a, is, a, is a very big news and let's hope india can uh, take advantage of the geopolitical situation in the world and and grow the sector uh, thank you so much jitesh uh, you know and initially i thought that uh, what are two people going to do on the panel but let me tell you i've been on many harassers panels and this one on one has been simply brilliant um <laughs> you know i have absorbed so much of what you've said and uh, i Thank hope you. i hope uh, you know you you've enjoyed the experience as well absolutely um i'm going to now close uh, this discussion thank you for coming online it's i think probably 2 or 3 am for you back home in uh, in california uh, but you still look uh, absolutely fresh so uh, great i'm going to thank frank and thank harasses and uh, bring this uh, session to uh, closed we had about 8 to 10 people at one time uh, coming and going so it was not bad uh, yeah. they were uh, they were listening to this uh, discussion and and we stay connected yeah absolutely thank you sunil thank you so much thank you thank you thank you harasses thank you